Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinemdy.com slash podcast and get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome back Urquita Darowin. She's a family physician. Her Kevin MD article is titled, The Little Mermaid Inspires a Healthcare Revolution. Urquita, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back. So we'll talk about your article in a little bit, but for those who didn't listen to your first episode, this is way back in 2021, just briefly share your story. Sure. So my name is Arkita DeRowan. I'm a family physician. I'm also board certified in diversity medicine and lifestyle medicine. I started out in traditional community health care centers where I thought I would dedicate my whole life in terms of FQHCs. But I discovered healthcare technology, and from there, I have had a lot of different leadership roles, started doing speaking engagements and growing opportunities, and now I work as a healthcare consultant, and I'm also starting a new organization that's going to work on decreasing healthcare disparities, addressing the social determinants of health. Excellent. And you mentioned that you're certified in diversity medicine. What exactly is that? So... There are so many different, as we know, uh, board certifications and things out there. And I am very passionate about decreasing healthcare disparities. So through the American Association of Public Health, they have a new board certification that highlights like how to deal with different cultures, how to work in the LGBT population, how to be more culturally competent. And they have a lot of core competencies to go through. And then you take a board exam and um, get board certified. So it's newer. I think it's been out for about two or three years, but I think it's an amazing um, thing for people who are interested in diversity um, to explore so that we can be more educated as to how we can help and empower our patients. And for those who aren't familiar, just give us the connection between social determinants of health, diversity, and how that impacts healthcare. Absolutely. So these are kind of buzzwords we're hearing in healthcare now. They're basically a lot of things, especially for like those of us who are in primary care that we know like 20% of your health is impacted by the healthcare system and everything that we know that we're kind of engaging with patients, but everything else is their outside part, their home, yeah. their education, their access to healthy foods, their access to jobs, their access to advancement, and all of these things kind of come together so that it makes us who we are. So if you have patients out there who may be quote unquote non-compliant and not taking their medicines, we have to dig deeper and realize why. Is it because they don't know that there are certain things they need to eat or anything, or are they choosing to pay it because they need to pay their rent yeah. or they have a corner store where they aren't having the access to the healthy foods. So we just need to work on asking more questions and then figuring out how we can collaborate and innovate in the space to help people all have access to these things. So your Kevin MD article is titled, The Little Mermaid Inspires a Healthcare Revolution. Tell us, how did your article come together? So it's, it's a funny story, and I kind of tell it a little bit in the article. I The Little Mermaid came out this summer, and everyone was talking about it, and I was really excited to see it because I was excited for the girl power. I was excited for the diversity and I was a little skeptical because when uh, I was younger, the original Little Mermaid came out and it was my absolute favorite Disney movie. So I went in it like ready to critique it and it was amazing. So I started like going home and looking at a few YouTube videos on like the little theories and stuff. And it kind of took me down a rabbit hole where I found out about its original lyricist, Howard Ashman. And I didn't know much about him. And there actually was a documentary about him where it explored how he was living in the time of the HIV epidemic. Mm -hmm. So it was a time in the late 80s, early 90s, where people weren't as out about their truth and what they're experiencing. And there wasn't a lot of things you could do to care for people who were living with HIV. So it was kind of a death sentence. And it showed just how he worked through it. And he actually died from it. But it also showed just like how scared he was to tell people what kinds of like boxes he had to live in. And now we live in a time where we have health care, we have ways to innovate, we have medications to treat it. And 
we should. So there are so many opportunities to kind of decrease these disparities so that we may continue to allow people to tell stories like Howard Ashman did, where they, I think when he won the Oscar posthumously, they said he was the person who gave the Little Mermaid her voice and a beast his soul. So I'm sure there's so many other innovators out there, whether or not they're in healthcare or other things, where we can come together and help people despite what they're going through. One of the things that you mentioned in your article was the so-called Disney model of storytelling. Now, what exactly is that and how can that be applied to healthcare? So stories are important. And I think Disney kind of hit like the nail on the head with that. I was listening on the um, thing with Howard Ashman and he was like, you always kind of have to set it up for a moment and build and kind of have the point where the person finds out who they are and they have that I want song. And what I want is for us to have decreased healthcare disparities. And the way to do that is to use the power of storytelling to reach communities, to reach the government and change policies and to reach different organizations who have the power to help us create these things. So going with storytelling to create innovation and to collaborate. Right now I'm working in the health tech field and I realize that a lot of times we work in silos where the medical people are working in one side and the engineers in the other, and we don't necessarily speak that same language. So we have to figure out a way to mesh them together and to help them understand like, This is why we need a history in the EMR every time uh, instead of just asking it on the first visit because things change, things evolve. So a lot of that just comes through storytelling and sharing these experiences so that people will know what's going on. I recently did a TEDx last year called Did Disney Just Save Healthcare? Imagine This. And in it, it kind of goes a little more deeply into how we can use people from all walks of life, even outside of healthcare, to bring their entrepreneurship or their states of excellence, being a subject matter expert to change and innovate. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that when it comes to changing minds, we can't rely on policy and numbers and PowerPoints and statistics to change minds. You really have to use stories to to sway the emotions, right? And really to make that difference. Now, when it comes to reducing healthcare disparities, give us an example of how storytelling or how stories can move the needle. Absolutely. There, first of all, there are a lot of people who don't necessarily know what is going on. They may not have experienced it. They may all have always had a job with insurance and they just think that that's how things work. So if you give an example, for example, in my TEDx, I talked about a patient I'm going to name. This isn't his real name for the listeners out there, sure. because of, uh, but Mr. Jack. And Mr. Jack, he was uninsured, undocumented, and he had some kidney problems. And they began to evolve because he couldn't see a specialist, couldn't afford the medicines, to the point in which he had kidney failure. And instead of him being able to go and get dialysis and all of the things that he needed set up, the only solution was for him to go to the emergency room every three days Mm -hmm. because he couldn't afford to go to the dialysis center and they wouldn't accept him. So telling these stories and sharing these things could lead to other innovations. Like we've seen a lot of the dialysis and kidney health tech companies coming up where we can kind of get some subsidies and, and environments and just figuring out ways in which people can connect and learn from these things. Another thing that you mentioned, drawing parallels from how Disney tells stories and how that could be applied to healthcare is embracing what's called a no-box approach, right, without limitations. What exactly is that? Tell us more about that. Sure. I think it comes to just thinking outside the limitations of where you are. A lot of times in healthcare, we say we're doing these things just because we've always done it that way. Like, We need to use Epic, like that's what we've been using since we got EMRs, most hospitals use it, but we don't. We can think of other ways and we can actually learn from other industries as we have before in terms of learning from the airline industry with surgeries and like their check boxes and the universal checklist or using information from other organizations to just learn how they run. For instance, if we learn from Costco instead of other large healthcare systems as to how they make things cheaper and more affordable for everyone. If we wanted to learn from teachers as or bring them on board to work in our healthcare systems to help create patient information that's more digestible and understandable. 
So there are so many different ways where we can think outside of the box to create solutions and learn from them, even if it's not necessarily tied to healthcare. Now, you're a healthcare consultant, so I'm sure you straddle the line between the traditional healthcare model and healthcare innovators, right? So what are some of the barriers that you see that prevents these no box solutions? You know, that what are some of the limitations and obstructions that prevents what you want from what's happening now? I think a lot of it is the mindset as well as the money, of course, like that kind of stuff from the VCs. They always have venture capitalists. They have a little more say than they probably should, but at the basis, it's more of speaking the language of each other. So if you have someone who may be a business expert who's grown many companies, may have created, and I'm just making this up, this isn't someone that I worked with, but maybe they created, I don't know, Kodak films, and they want to come together and create something in the healthcare space. Yes, you're an amazing business person, but we need to know how to work through the processes. So I've definitely noticed that there is a disconnect where in healthcare, we like to say, here's the problem. We know how to fix it. Let's do this to fix it. And in, I guess, like engineering and things like that, of course, they have the design thinking method where they come together and they're like, here's the problem. Let's get an example. Let's talk through it. Let's figure out the lowest line fruit that are the cheapest, then let's come up with the cheapest version one, put it out, get feedback from our different users, and then reiterate it and make it better. Now, neither way is wrong, and they both will get to a, a wonderful solution, but one doesn't necessarily go with the other, and we have to figure out a way to, one, communicate this with each other so that people in health tech know that that's how the system works because a lot of us are leaving from traditional healthcare to get there and we may not understand the process. And then we need to communicate with those in that field to kind of merge it and figure out a happy medium. Now, are you encouraged by what you're seeing? Are you seeing both sides listening to each other from your role as a healthcare consultant? Absolutely. I think that there's a lot of opportunity for growth and people are looking for it. They're looking to be the next big thing. They're looking for these solutions. So as a health tech consultant, it's my role to kind of figure out a way in which to explain this and help them kind of go through the roadmap of how to get to that part where they are merging their healthcare teams with the other teams. We're talking to Rakita Daruin. She is a family physician. Her Kevin MD article is titled, The Little Mermaid Inspires a Healthcare Revolution. Rakita, tell us some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience biggest take home method is that it's okay to innovate like we have to use storytelling we have to figure out different ways to reach people but at the core of all of this for those who are listening we have to remember our why there are a lot of people who go into healthcare and then they may not necessarily remember or they remember and, and they kind of become more distant mm -hmm. from the patients that they serve or you're in health tech and you may not necessarily have that what they call user which is a patient we have to remember that the patients are at the core of everything we do for instance i i have a more recent story that i'll say quickly because i know that time is kind of dwindling down but it kind of brought me back to my why with working for all of these different things. A lot of times, like, of course, I love my patients. And, and that's kind of like why I'm here and why I'm doing this to kind of reach people from a higher level. But on a personal note, my cousin, who's 30 years old and did not smoke, was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer about three or four weeks ago. So she has Medicaid and is more from a more underserved environment. And the initial hospital that she went to just diagnosed her and told her to go figure it out on her own. There was no social worker. There was no collaboration or connection to who else she could go to just because she didn't have the insurance in that jurisdiction. So it took me a while to help her navigate. And even calling the hospital, the care was horrendous. So I want for those who are in healthcare to remember the patients that you serve and although you may see a lot of patients with the same condition, remember that it's their first time and their only diagnosis and they're dealing with it. So even if you're not able to help them, it's okay to give them resources, it's okay to navigate, and it's okay to be nice. 
So just bring the humanity back into to medicine. That's that's what I would ask. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story, time, and insight. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you.